Hey, welcome to the CCI meeting, April 4th, 2024 at 6.34 p.m. And Lily, do you want to read the... I would be delighted. Thank I, you. I, I'd like to share with you all that certain meetings normally held municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation, participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. And our recorded meetings can be found on YouTube and the ways to join us are listed. The Zoom connections are all in the agenda. Excellent. Thanks, Lily. Okay. I, I sent a letter saying that we have to have continue to have hybrid meetings to, to uh, both of our legislators. Uh, yes. Thank okay. you. All right. Yeah. Okay. So meeting guidelines, please speak one at a time and I'm going to call you out if you don't. Uh, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non-repetitive. And I'm going to take roll call. Jim Cambius. Here. Uh, Julie, not yet. Lily Dwight. Present. Tim Hilchi. Here. Andrea Leapson. Here. Denise Mason, I'm here. Trevor, not here. Annie Curtis, never here. Carolyn, <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn is here. M.A. here, and Pete Locke I'm cannot here. attend. Excuse me? No, I didn't hear you. And Christopher Dunn is here. So cool. All right. Hey, you know what? Before we start, I just want to remind. I just want to remind. Him? Did you get Tim? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did. I oh, did. Okay. okay. All right. Before we start, I just want to remind people, at every planning board meeting, we do because most of us are on different committees. So we usually do a report, you know, very brief report at our planning board meeting about what's going on. And obviously we do this at CCI. So I'm sort of hoping that whatever meetings you have, not do a long drawn out report, but please report on the highlights from CCI that we keep reporting and whoever's watching knows what's going on in town. Okay. And I'm going to be monitoring all your YouTube videos to check to make sure you're doing that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So the next order of business is approve the minutes from February 22nd. So everyone had a chance to look at them. Okay. I second. All right. Thank you. Any revisions, any corrections, additions? I was absent that, that time, so I'm not going to vote. Okay. Please. All right. So, all right. Uh, so, if I no con corrections or additions, how about uh, Lily? Let's approve the minutes. Hi. Carolyn. Tim. Hi. M.A. Yes. Jim. Hi. Andrea. Recusing. Oh, yep, recuse and Christopher. <laughs> All right, and Denise, I right. okay. So minutes are approved. All right, and if anybody does come on, we do a public comment. I got major cutting out. Um, can you mute if there's noise going on in the background? Okay. All right, we're gonna go. Okay. We're gonna go in, that, um, okay, we're gonna go into committee updates, and I'm gonna start with Jim. Okay, well, we had a library meeting just yesterday, uh, the last meeting that the library board is going to hold in the current building, because they're moving. Um, that's the big news. April 15th is moving day. Um, they've got Siderly movers lined up. They're going to they're going to load everything on a truck and drive it next door and unload it, because apparently the movers don't want to have to drag everything across the lawn. <laughs> whatever they're professionals um and um so yeah the um they have bids in um let me find the director's report the the bid is 12 point one no 12 point three yeah to stay on, on in the budget um with the contract bid they uh had to um, make a few changes to the to the project so um they're leaving a couple of things off 
at least for now. Um, like uh, right. a wood uh, panel ceiling in one area and the um, canopy in front. Um, and I believe the uh, they're eliminating the position of a site manager distinct from the project manager. So the project manager will also act as site manager. Um, and we're probably gonna have to get our own furnishings. But um, today is the last day uh, for the library. Um, it's be closed after this. So if you have any books out, keep them. Um, they'll be packing up and prepping to move. Moving is the 15th. Uh, at some point, we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony, which will obviously be just a complete, you know, symbolic gesture. There won't be, it'll be well before the actual construction equipment shows up. Um, uh, I believe the goal is to have one of the larger, um, individual donors who is uh, of quite advanced age be the person to turn the first shovel full. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that should be enough, right? We're starting a new building. That's the news. That's yeah. great. Really? How's the fundraising going? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. So we are now at $1.1 million. Um, DA raised their pledge from 30 to 100,000. I think the consensus was they were, you know, might have caught them at a bad time the first time around because 100,000 is a bit more what you'd expect from them. Um, the public crowdfunding campaign got 50,000, which is good. Um, we're all looking forward to the wine raffle. If Tim is still willing to do that. Um, and, you know, they're sending out letters to foundations with i believe chris's help and um you know just continuing the process of trying to get shaking the tin cup great thanks jim well that's pretty exciting i didn't realize that you know it's funny because at the lab library building committee i didn't think that anything was going to be decided about you know taking taking, uh, you know, reducing things. And this was what Candace reported to us. There may be oh. some ways that these can be salvaged. Um, okay, maybe Tim has a response. Really, this part of it is like they can't renegotiate, they can't haggle over the contract until it's signed, which seems kind of backwards to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what Dan had said. Oh, Tim, go ahead. So what happened was we approved the base bid only. There were alternates to it, which was like the wood, ceiling oh, okay. um, okay. canopy and i think there was a third one the adjustments we made before we awarded the contract was a, a reduction in the architect's fee and a reduction in the opm's fee um, of course those are the first things that the opm is hope, hoping to put back in whereas <laughs> you know i'd be fine if it was an actual reduction um, but that's just me <laughs> Because uh, I think I think architects are going to face a thing like real estate agents. This thing where you get eight or ten percent of the total cost of the project is probably going to get revisited at some point because it's it's kind of like the same thing, right? But don't tell the architect I said that. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll get some of those things back in. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, the canopy is kind of important. Yeah. Yeah, the canopy yeah. would be nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Jim. Okay, let's see. She's not here. Um, Lily. Uh, Emma has got her hand up. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to leave. This my my reception is just. Yeah. No. So no, I'm going to say goodbye, and uh, I apologize. It's just well, Emma, I, if, four rooms if in the house, and none of it works. So bye bye, Emma. If <laughs> I was going to say, if there's anything that you want to report, just put it in the chat. Okay. If not, okay. that's okay. Okay. All right. Great. I'll Thanks. do that. Okay. All right. Lily. Okay. So I'm going to be reporting on the CPC and senior housing. And all of this <clears throat> is in the uh, reports that I put in my committee reports. Uh, every single time, unlike anybody else. Anyway, 
Um, let's start with the CPC. So we are not moving any applications forward to town meeting. We did hold a public hearing on a, a historic preservation application for the TAC painting and the applicant requested a vote rather than tabling it to fall town meeting and, and it was denied for lack of a public accessible site upon completion. The um, 1888 building application has been tabled until fall town meeting and we have scheduled um, our next meeting for August 14th at 615 to begin the review of that process. Um, and I know that there will be a lot of public uh, meetings or hearings, I'm not sure what we call them anymore, I know they're different, um, on the 1888 building, so um, maybe the CPC will be able to partner with the select board um, as, as part of that process rather than have multiple public hearings on it. Um, we, I want to tell everybody here, and please bring it to your committees, is the CPC, the deadline has been changed to November 1st. It is no longer March 1st or whatever. <laughs> is November 1st and the decision date, um, like the final deciding meeting is gonna be like March 14th or something so that we can actually get warrant articles in, um, not just in the last 24 hours. Um, the CPC is going to be um, doing a an informational hearing as required by law and it's going to be on September 11th at 6.30 pending availability. So it'll be a hybrid uh, town hall uh, thing. And the purpose of that is to inform the community about what the CPC is and then to hear from the community what their priorities are for the allocation of CPC funds. And following that, we will develop a CPC plan for the year and the plan helps guide the recommendations of the committee um, specifically in the event that there are competing uh, applications for a limited pool of money. So just that, so that is the way it's um, supposed to go. And that is the way under Kathy's leadership we're going to be making it go. So you'll be hearing a little more from the CPC. Okay, um, senior housing, we had, um, so our focus is strictly on the St. James uh, property right now. Um, we are, oh, that's the old one. No, no, hang on. So we held an open house and it, we had really impressive turnout with a, a lot of strong support for senior housing. And, um, Interestingly, there were very vocal uh, comments about saving the church, but a number of members of the committee had people come up to them after the meeting and say they didn't care about the church, they just want senior housing. And, and we had given people index cards so they could write stuff down without having to say it in public, and, um, and yet still people were not that comfortable uh, voicing that. But but there's still, I mean, people, are, but one thing, everybody's really interested in preserving sort of the streetscape, okay? Um, the geothermal assessment component of our contract has been moved to the heat grant, and I'm working with Christopher on um, realigning what services we're gonna get from Berkshire Design, and we're shooting to get a cost estimate for infrastructure so that the town has a sense of what we're gonna to have to do for this. And I'm hoping we'll have even enough money left over to do a traffic study, but we gotta see what they come in at with first. And um, I we discussed this with the Community Preservation Committee and they approved it as part of the funds that had been approved for the uh, development of this property. The so the we're going to be working on the RFP with the support of FERCOG um, using Sunderland as a model. Um, however, we need to make some changes because there have been there's been a, a lawsuit um, in Holyoke that has clarified the process a little bit more. So we'll be changing some stuff. 
Next steps. Uh, we're going to be doing geotechnical borings. Then these, I've been educated to learn, are uh, borings to determine the nature of the soil and the stability to put buildings on. So that's not the same as geothermal, but it is a geotech boring. Um, we're working on, we're going to work on the RFP and Christine Medore of uh, Mass Housing Partners, who worked with us in the Complete Neighborhoods, has offered to review our RFP, which would be really excellent and to help us in any way possible. And I like that attitude. I think it bodes well. She's very impressed with what we're doing with the whole municipal campus. And that can't be bad. Um, we do need to, um, I'm going to work with Christopher a bit and um, understand what of the FERCOG's RFP process. Um, we were originally retaining them to review our um, RFP, but maybe we just need them to manage the process and that might lower the um, cost. And it's we're sort of looking at getting our RFP out hopefully in early July. And that in a shell of nuts is us. Tim? Just wanna, you're, you're putting out an RFP for the geotech, ge, no, 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 sorry. The RFP is for senior housing. Right. So what, just, just curious, what happens when the 1888 building goes forward and we decide that we're gonna tear down uh, the town hall, the old town hall? Hey, we have enough people who would move into senior housing in a heartbeat that, right. you know, that, what is that, five years out, you know, give or take, that uh, we could, but also- Hopefully could, less because, you know, we got a $4 million grant and we got to spend it within probably sooner than five years. Excellent. Well, but we still got to take the old one down. But but the other thing is we need workforce housing in town. We've got to have- um demonstrated as a town that we support uh, affordable housing in the real meaning of the word. <laughs> not, not, um, so that that's an important thing. That's something else we could do. But, Carol? Carol, um, when, uh, when I spoke to Joe Comerford about trying to get help for us on our Caesar, senior housing, she suggested that we bring out the secretary of housing and have him talk to us with our plan for the campus because um you know the new housing bond bill um is is um is go going through and we would she suggested we volunteer as a pilot which of course we would and um i but as lily said we have plenty of seniors that would move into additional housing so the whole idea of taking down the town hall is then put up another complex um, for seniors uh, that would be subsidized. And that's that's how we're going to get affordable housing because you turn over the houses in your community to younger families because our seniors are overhoused. So our, in the next within the next couple of weeks, we'll, we're going to send an invitation. The select board will send an invitation. I was going to figure out how we wanted to bring it up in our next senior housing meeting, but we're, we need to send that invitation out so that we have a visible project shovel ready because most of the communities are pushing back. And so he's looking for someone that is willing to have something built and we're ready to have something built right now. So we have an opportunity and I don't wanna pass that up. That's great. <clears throat> so keep us informed when that's happening so we can do our stock presentation <laughs> done before. Yeah, cool. Great. Well, thanks, Luke. Gosh, there's a lot going on. That's that's amazing. All right. So let's see. Who's next? How about Andrea? What's happening with Open Space? Open Space has welcomed Chris Curtis to our ranks. Um, I keep, no, I've just lost your name. Uh, uh, we had a, a, a resignation of someone who's been ill. She served on the on the I'm so bad with names. She served on the committee for many years, and um, and so she's she's gone, and Chris Curtis is there. As a result, since he seems to be gainfully employed still, unlike the rest of the retired board, 
we have moved our meetings. They're going to be on Monday early evenings, and um, we're going to make sure we don't um, clash with the planning board. So that's one bit of news. The other is that three of us attended a mass land trust conference, which was held at U, uh, UMass uh, on March 23rd, I believe. And that was quite interesting in part that we think there's a, an interesting way to map trails in town that would cost us nothing, um, would be available to, um, to town residents. And it would, um, so would not require us to um, necessarily print um, print maps. Uh, so we would be able to um, send people toward this app, which was the 2023 uh, app, best app, app according to Apple Store. Um, so anyway, that, so that was is interesting. That all, and we, and, and is we, that yeah, all trails, Andrea? It is all trails. Um, they have a system whereby um, you can apply to be a like an administrator of a trail system, and then you suggest trails, and then they have a system whereby they approve or don't approve them. And the nice thing about all trails, I am told um, by people who use it uh, often, is that it's got people uh, interact with it. So they would be able to say, uh, it's very muddy in this section, you know, make sure you wear your boots <laughs> when, you, when you come here. So anyway, it, the, so we looked, we talked with the, uh, the gentleman who's from All Trails. He showed us how it worked. And um, Julie Caswell, our chair, who has used All Trails all over the world, was really excited about it because she knows the capability of this. And I believe it would cost nothing or maybe $40 a year. I mean, so very, a very low, a very low price. Um, she did meet with the conservation commission. Uh, again, I was, um, I was out of town to talk about the permanent protection of certain pieces of town owned land. I haven't, our town, our meeting is next week. So I don't know the result of that meeting, uh, that she had, but we are going <laughs> to try to move forward on permanently protecting these um, pieces of land. And the last little bit is that uh, we've talked a little about um, carbon sequestration and the amount of land that we have is just too small. The, the forests that we have in town uh, would need to be partnered with other forests and other towns uh, nearby to actually make any um, real impact. Lily, you got a question for me? I do. Um, I think I sent this to you, or maybe I sent it to MA, and MA's not here. Oh, sort of here. Um, that there's this neighborhood uh, carbon sequestration article. Is, did you? Yeah, but again, it's just it's it's not enough land. It's got to be thousands of acres, and we have hundreds. So that's part of that. That's part of the issue, and it may even have to be tens of thousands of acres. And it's my understanding that the whole getting paid for sequestration has really um, proven to be of reduced impact for towns or there's very little money uh, to come from it. So is that, is that good for everybody? No, that's great, Andrea. Hey, I'm just sort of curious. So at our planning board meeting the Lynn other night- Lynn Rose, Lynn Rose is the name of the um, woman. <laughs> bubbled up, uh, who, we, who, who, who resigned. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. I was just gonna say at our planning board meeting, we had public hearing on adding 20 feet of the antenna. And what was interesting is that the fire chief came, you know, in, in um, saying, you know, you know, they're all for it because most of them have phones and have AT&T and it doesn't work really well. So it's really good news that we'll get that because that's my concern is like all trails, that's great. But what happens you're up on the trail and you don't have service. So it sounds like this would be really helpful now yeah. that we're, Raising the antenna, so. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, so in fact, um, using all trails, we could see that there are trails that exist, but they are not, um, um, what's the right word? Uh, they're not official trails. They're not official trails. And this would put people on official trails so that you'd be able to know, do go here, please don't go over there. Even though there's a trail, that's on someone's private property. So we would be able to designate trails um, very specifically, and we would have this 
someone apparently uh, it, who has Massachusetts as their territory would look at what we are suggesting and approve or or not approve them. So there's um, it's not just us going out willy nilly doing things. There has to be um, some oversight by all trails. Okay, well that's that's pretty exciting. Thanks. Yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, um, Carolyn. Um, well, uh, the C CIPC um, had its public hearing. We're going to do um, uh, less than what we thought even. Uh, so it's a little over 100,000. We're gonna move the school flooring till next year. Um, mm -hmm. And But we are going to support the air conditioning, the town server and a couple other things. Um, the SCEMS and the um, ma management asset plans are gonna be paid for by both the um, South, you know, the wastewater um, enterprise fund and the SCEMS enterprise fund. So we're only bringing forward a little over a hundred thousand, which is um, pretty lean, but as you know, we don't have a lot of money this year. So, um, but we are working, we're gonna, we agreed all three to work um, beyond the town meeting this year and um, uh, come up with a 15 year plan because our five year plan is really has been not adequate. And with the 15 year plan, we can put the roads that we have left to repair on them, which are really in 26 to 29 and beyond, um, just because funding is an issue for the roads that we have left to repair. Um, and we're not sure uh, when we'll be getting to River Road. Hopefully it's all stable, but we wanna do a hydrology study of the ridge and what uh, where water is coming from, which is really different than three or four years ago. And that sort of segues into what MVP has been doing. Um, MVP committee uh, did hung in there. Tim. You uh, owe me, Carol, is big time for that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I owe everybody. It was horrendous. But we did um, six hours of training in March three Tuesdays in a row and we had good group participation. So we, um, an MA, thank you. MA was another one that hung in there. We participated. We made an impression on Andrew. He's writing off on our plan. He <laughs> said that it was good, good thoughts. Oh gosh. Anyway, so we're moving on 2.0 and that means we can get some, uh, hopefully some more money for other projects. Some hey, Carolyn, other projects Carolyn, oh, go ahead. All right, before you continue, can you guys open up your meeting? Select oh, board meeting. Or, you know what? I forgot. I don't That's think okay. we're not posted tonight. So we're just reporting. Actually, we're you're always posted tonight. It's always posted. Oh, CCI okay. oh, was uh, oh, I didn't. Yeah, so just, I guess yeah, I just, didn't see it. All right, no, I'll be okay. meeting tonight at 6.02 p.m. <laughs> Tim, Tim. Tim is a little. Uh, 702, um, Carolyn. Is it 702? Yep. Oh, yeah. 702. Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I looked at the wrong clock. That's okay. You're making me feel better every minute here. Okay, Tim. <laughs> got a lot of time zones in that place. I know. I know. Um, so anyway, uh, we're, we're working on the MVP moving forward on that 2.0, and we're hoping to get certified so we'll be eligible for more money. Next thing to just side little side on that is part of MVP is we really think the village area around the campus, all that area is our most vulnerable population and most susceptible so flooding. So um, Christopher very graciously walked around with Nick Miller of Field mm -hmm. Geology um, this past uh, Thursday, um, spent a few hours and poor thing, kept him late. But, and then I spent a couple hours extra too. So he was here until after six o'clock. Um, he was, I think he was only anticipating a couple hours, but uh, there's complex issues. And he has agreed that a uh, hydrology study is probably the best thing to do, but he's gonna do it in phases. There's certainly different issues in the north end of town and Cumtick Ridge um, and then of course, uh, we need a hydrology model for the Bloody Brook on how we're gonna 
work that and what are the chokehold culverts that we want to replace through them through the um MVP program and you know some of the other ones that are going to be available shortly so um poor Christopher has a lot of work going forward he loves it Carolyn uh for grants but um I'm really excited because we actually really do need to address um how we're going to handle flooding uh it's predicted the new predictions for NOAA came out today. I was on a web webinar on that and um, for, for the hurricane season. And, you know, we just, we have so much water. We've got to, and that was the thing that Nick, he said, this is more complicated than he thought, you know, from my description and the description that we wrote for the small grant that we got through the conservation district to hire them. And um, so he's he's going to pull in uh, support because they're a pretty small shop and he feels like this is uh, going to be a couple years of phase projects and um, hopefully we'll get it funded through the conservation district MVP program um, so that people can see the value of this and um, we'll have some real direction uh, as to what to do and respond uh, for these you know just it's seemingly regular rain events that we're having I mean, it's, right. it is climate change. Oh, uh, and I'm just reporting. Normally, I don't report for the Mosquito District, but um, we're in for a little grant to do some extra surveillance um, that I'm hoping we're going to get for the Asian tiger mosquito that carries that has potential to carry a lot more disease load. And it is here. So um, and that hopefully will be then trigger some more grants for us to work on Bloody Brook because when we have drought like we did in 22, it was very stagnant. So the whole point is to have some kind of plan when we have drought, periods of drought, um, so we don't have uh, a mosquito, you know, breeding ground. We have dragonfly habitat that is beautiful and that, you know, uh, will eat mosquitoes, but also we'll have some kind of treatment program that will handle uh, the droughts and then we'll be able to handle the flooding as well. Okay. Well, that's a lot. Well, thanks, Carol. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? If not, I'm going to move on to Christopher. I, I have a quick one. Uh, what about anything up with the 350th, Carol? Oh, yes. Not? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot. Yes, the 350th, the last event for the 350th is going to be June 8th. It's going to be a home day. Um, I'm hoping actually that we'll have an MVP table that day to do some more outreach and education. This will be also an opportunity for senior housing. Um, it's going to be uh, like one to three kids events, um, free food, balloons, face painting, that kind of thing. And it will be the burying of the time capsule, the bench that goes over the time capsule and it's sort of off to the side to the of the police station. You know, when you go in the entrance, it's in, in that general area. All right, Tim, question? Just wanted to, did you say June 8th? June 8th, yes. Because um, there's also the DES Pride going on on June 8th from one to Oh man. Well, that's what Susie Antonellis told us was the date. So no. there's enough time be... for to change it. Yeah. Oh gee. Okay. Well, just just to be, be aware. There will hey, be you some... just proved the worth of CCI in that No, I know, thing, right? Um, um there will be one more event of burying the time capsule and so it will be happening. Probably okay. not now though. <laughs> It sounds like you're burying it next to a structure that's about to be demolished. No, no, not the uh, the police station will remain, Jim. Okay. Um, we can't afford uh, right the upgrade of a, um, a you know public safety building. No, I understand. However, I mean, what we can do, be... we can convert well, the uh, the plan. The long term plan is that it's easy to convert the garage that is there to additional space that will make us compliant. And then we can add on um, a garage bay for pretty cheap. Right, and but I mean, the police station adjoins the town offices, so. They're two separate buildings. 
they are two yeah, separate. If it's going to be by the front door, it's going to be in potentially a construction zone. Is is that a problem? No, it's going to be off to the side. You know, when you walk into the front door, um, it would be on your right where the arbor vitae bushes are. You know where they put the little reindeer out at light up at Christmas time. So if you're looking, at the, take your word for it. If you're looking at the police station, Jim, there's there's a marble um, sign, and the arbor vitae are over between the police station and the um, the parking lot in the 1888 building. All right, so it'll all be on that side. Okay. Yeah. I I had I thought you meant it was going to be by the entrance. Uh, it's it's really a not a a big area. We're talking the bench is four by eight, I believe. Okay. The base is just a little bit bigger than that. And the whole space is like not very big. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Okay. So, All no, right. No panic. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to Christopher. Thanks, Denise. Uh, so I'm going to run through a bunch of things really quickly. And then, you know, I'm sure there will be questions. So uh, first town common project. Um, so we've had some conversations with MassDOT um, because they came to us and said, hey, we'd actually like to remove parking on Sugarloaf and Park Street since those are technically state highway. Um, you know, not really a huge issue given that the Leary lot is planned. So there'll be plenty of parking still, um, but we were just trying to coordinate with them as to where the crosswalks would be located from the common. Um, so not no total clarity on that just yet, but we're working with uh, Jeff Squire at Berkshire Design to to get that out to bid, uh, you know, finally after years and years and years. So, fingers crossed we'll be able to do that this spring. Um, in terms of municipal campus stuff, uh, the Senior Center Feasibility Study. Um, so we got seven proposals back for that. Um, just as a reminder, this was an RFQ we put out with FERCOG to look at the 1821 church, the Oxford building in Sunderland, and then a third site TBD as a permanent location for the senior center. Um, we had a little informal meeting with a couple folks from Waitley, Sunderland, um, and of course, uh, Jen from the senior center today. And so we've got kind of an idea of, you know, what firms we want to move forward with, but we're still trying to figure out exactly what the next step is. So more to come on that. Uh, 1888, Tim, I think you already spoke to that, right? I will. Um, or you will, that's right. <laughs> um, just going down my list. Uh, Elm Street. Um, so I reached out to Ty and Bond about uh, complete streets because that is one of our priority projects on our lists is, you know, redoing sidewalks and et cetera on Elm between Maine and the railroad. Um, they got back to me today, actually, with some draft cross section. So I'm going to be talking with the select board about that next week, um, and we'll figure out what the next step is. There's two opportunities to apply for construction funding. One as soon as May, which I think might be a little bit aggressive, and then another opportunity in the fall. So we'll talk about that with the select board. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Bloody Brook, Caroline already covered that. Geothermal, uh, so the heat grant. Um, so we had a kickoff meeting with all the different communities that got heat grants. <laughs> Denise, I believe, tuned in for that, so did Tim. That was um, another fun one, Christopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, lots of lots of information, certainly. Um, yeah. So yeah, so um, we've got a firm identified who could do the feasibility study. Um, we're actually trying to figure out, and it's a question that a few communities have, um, what the procurement rules are on this. It's a little bit uncharted territory because geothermal and network geothermal are so new um, in some sense. So just trying to figure that out. But one way or another, we have, we're have we going to have a firm who's going to be able to do the feasibility study. Um, the feasibility study will look at you know network geothermal at the campus um, and potentially connecting to BBC and other major employers and institutions uh, in South Deerfield. So it could be really good. And we just got to find out which firm it's going to be if it's not this one. So uh, let's see, then beyond that, Mill Village. Uh, so the intersection with Route 5 and North Main. Um, so we had a meeting with MassDOT. I think that was back in February, actually. So I may have already updated this group. Um, maybe not, maybe it was March. You know what, it was March. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had a meeting with MassDOT. Um, they are very open to addressing the problems at that intersection. Um, they, they had a couple different ideas that they put out there. They have a whole process they have to go through. Um, so on our end, the select board just submitted a letter basically saying, hey, we're really excited you guys want to do something about this dangerous intersection. Um, and, uh, you know, by the way, we're here, we'll be supportive of what you guys recommend. And here are some letters from our residents as well. So the residents, I think, um, Wayne Manley and Patricia Taylor. Taylor, Taylor thank you. I, I believe they're, they're going to be out at the transfer station collecting signatures on a little petition to say, hey, do something about this intersection. So that'll be good info for MassDOT to get when they're making their decision. Yeah, they, they did that last Saturday. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I think the last big thing, um, shared streets and sidewalks. So, um, Denise, was it a year ago or two years ago? When did we get this grant? <laughs> yeah, two years ago. It shared streets and spaces yeah. because we didn't have sidewalks included in that yet. It's been a long well, yeah, time. Well, so, yeah, so, so I'll get to that. So the shared streets and spaces uh, is for a couple crosswalks to be restriped along North Main um, and also have uh, beacons added um you know flashing beacons basically on either side of the street so that when people are crossing it's really obvious um so that's uh we've got an, an invitation for bids ready for that uh it's going to go out hopefully next week and then at simultaneously um kevin's long awaited north main sidewalk project is also ready to go out to bid um so we are coordinating with FERCOG on getting that out as well so the hope is we'll be able to do one mandatory site visit for any contractors inter interested in those projects and they can coordinate and we may even get the same contractor on both projects. We'll see. Tim. So just a question about the North Main Street sidewalks. I haven't seen anything saying what they're gonna do. So if this is just um, a partial North Main Street or is it actually getting to the center of town because one I would support, the other one I wouldn't support unless I see some actual sophisticated drawings returning green space to, to the center of town. Um, right now we've got huge wide North Main Street where you know people park up in front of their houses and it's just a big asphalt jungle there. So yeah, do you yeah. have any actual concrete information? Uh, I can certainly forward you the draft IFB, but let me also just pull up really quick because I have an image that kind of shows uh, where where both projects would take place. So give me one second. Sure. Thank you. I, I agree with Tim. We haven't seen anything proposed at this point yet. We've been certainly waiting for it to happen but um, we haven't seen the actual plans. Yeah, give me one moment. I'm just gonna show up in here. Ah, here we go. Give me one second. Okay. Sorry for the, del the delay there. Uh, can you see that okay? Yep. Well, I, might, I might need to zoom out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, the map on the left-hand side here shows kind of the project limits for the sidewalk effort. Um, so the pink is just the west side of the street and the orange is the proposed east side of the street. Um, the way the bid was set up by Kevin is to just do as many linear feet as they could um, in those areas. And I believe for the most part that this portion of North Main, um, you know, it already has that green tree lawn or buffer or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so that's, that's where his focus was. Um, and then the kind of zoomed in part here is where the shared streets project would take place. So that's really right in front of Frontier. Um, you see the multiple crosswalks that would be restriped. Um, and then we also, um, given that the, the park on North Main hasn't worked out so far, um, I think we're gonna also be able to add 
this crosswalk and beacons down at Pleasant Street. Um, so right in front of the Galinsky property. Uh, so those are the two projects and their limits. I don't know if that lines up with your expectations, Tim, or Well, it, or it clarifies. I mean, it, it, I need to refresh my memory about where this, uh, where Galinsky is in relation to getting further down, where there's this huge, you know, where the North Main is really wide. It may, may be fine. And my understanding is, um, Kevin was talking about um, using asphalt. Is that right? Yeah, for the well, for the existing asphalt sidewalks. Yeah. In this section, uh, yes, I believe that is the plan. And the the purple the purple um, is um, where does it stop? Again, right across from Galinsky. Uh, so it, yeah, so it's from Pleasant Street um, north to basically you can see it on the smaller map here. Right. It goes right mm -hmm. up to where the driveway for the school is. Yeah. Okay, and is that a different material or? Um, I would have to check uh, the IFB and and see what uh, it included in there. Okay. Yeah. Well, this seems okay. It's the downtown part that I was concerned about. So this reflects. Yeah, the downtown. Yeah. Yeah. The downtown, obviously right on, you know, right in front of the campus there is obviously there's just way too much asphalt and it would be fantastic to do something that <laughs> makes it just a more inviting pedestrian uh, experience for sure. Um, but I think this was, I, I believe this is where Kevin landed after discussions with the select board last year, yep. I think. It does reflect what our, we talked about. So that's, that's a little, that's encouraging. <laughs> Okay, well, and there that we can um, maybe do a more in-depth discussion at the select board meeting next week. Um, so I was gonna be at that one anyway. So yeah, let's plan on that. Thank you, Christopher. Absolutely. Uh, and then I think that's it for the moment. There's a couple potential one-stop grants, um, but uh, so far most of them are private developers. So the, the Cumbies, I think we talked about before, um, the Heller brothers are still looking at uh, redeveloping that. So we're going to see what we can do to be supportive of them. And then uh, Phil Nash up at the rail yard has, uh, he has big ideas up there as well. So we'll see how we can be supportive of him uh, in addition to the Hellers. So let me know if anyone has any questions. Yeah, I do, Christopher. When you were talking about um, your meeting with DOT and parking on Sugarloaf, you know, I think... <laughs> Parking on Sugarloaf, especially when, what is it, what, which church is that? Oh, God, what's the Catholic church that they park on the street? Holy, Holy, fa it's... Holy Family. Holy Family. Yeah. So, you know, there's a huge parking lot out back. I don't know why they've got to park on the street, but they do all the time because when I'm on my bike on a Sunday, it's like I've got to navigate past all the cars or whether it's, fr you know, Friday night or whenever people go to mass, I don't know. But so I'm sort of wondering, what are they going to do? Send send out the DOT police to police that section? Or what? So so they were just referring to the marked spots uh, further up, closer oh. to Main Street. Um, and I, I think somebody at the meeting did bring up the church, and and yeah. they kind of said, "Well, that's a police matter, so we'll <laughs> we'll let them deal with it." Basically, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. That's a lot of good stuff. Um, did Are we still considering with the shared streets and spaces, we were talking about a temporary speed bump or something, is that still in the picture? So, so we had been talking about that and then we realized there was this opportunity at the Pleasant Street crosswalk. Um, and so I think it, it ended up just kind of being easier to say, hey, let's actually just do the restriping and the beacons there as well instead of doing the temporary stuff. Okay, there um, already be I thought there was already a beacon at Pleasant Street. There's uh there's a beacon I think I don't thought. know if it's even a beacon. There's a ra there's a radar sign is what there is. There's a speed feedback oh, radar okay. sign. Okay. So it'll tell you how fast you're going, but nothing that the kids can press and that'll flash to let drivers know, hey, I'm trying to cross the street. So that's what we're right. trying to do there. Great. Wow, thanks. That's a lot of good, lot of good stuff happening. 
Okay, I'm going to move on. I think Emma said that she can talk now. So give us your report. Yes, yes I uh, moved down into my cellar and uh, the reception seems to be better and it's sticking with me right now. So uh, the uh, energy committee um, is continuing. We, we have a, the green communities grant is, they just came out with the, with the date for applications, it's it's May 10th. Um, we continue, are continuing to try and get Frontier um, to finish up the documentation they need to do in order to um, be part of that grant. The grant we're gonna apply for, we'll do uh, building management uh, systems upgrading on both um, the elementary school and frontier, which will also, there will also be some air sealing um, that we can get major fun funding from uh, Eversource. And uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so we're a lot, both schools have put in um, uh, um, mini splits, but they're only using them for air conditioning. And so this this will make it will interconnect that so they can use them for heat also, and reduce the amount of fossil fuels they're using. And um, so if we can squeak in, if Frontier gets us their information soon enough, and we can get the grant done. Front uh, FERCOG is helping us with that. Get a grant done, uh, application in by um, May tenth then hopefully all of that will happen over the summer or at least into the fall or whenever we get at, usually you get the money uh, the beginning of the uh, fiscal year. So that's exciting. And then the other thing that we're looking at, um, which we talked to the selectmen a little bit about is um, what's called Green Communities 2.0, um, which is, coming out of DOER and uh, you you need to um, qualify for it and there's a, some hoops that we have to jump through but it will mean a, a funding for solar and geothermal and things like that the DOER will now pick up on because it's a, this, this one has a different focus than just energy efficiency but really reduction in uh, fossil fuels. So um, we're really hoping to be able to do that. Um, and we will be doing presentations to the select board and public hearings on, on the, the different things that we have to do in order to, there's some vehicle policies, there's um, a new stretch code, uh, an optional, uh, 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 I think it's called the optional stretch code, anyhow, a higher grade stretch code, et cetera, et cetera. So, you will be hearing more about that as time goes on. Great, thanks. Tim? Do you have a timeline on when we might hear about this? Is it months away? Well, when we talked to you all, the um, and Chris Mason was there, we were talking about um, maybe trying to get uh, the fall, you know, at the fall town meeting. Um, that's what we would love because then we'll be, as Carolyn has pointed out, if you're in the early stages of these grants, you get more money. And so we'd like to be, um, you know, one of the early applicants uh, for, for this program. And um, so I talked to uh, Chris Mason just the other day, and I, I told him that as soon as town meeting was over and the select board had the ability to think about something other than all the things that are lined up for town meeting, uh, we would do a, uh, a presentation for the select board on the um, optim optim optimized stretch code, uh, which I think is going to be the more the most difficult part. We also have to, we haven't heard that we've gotten the grant for the uh, roadmap, which it, which we have applied for. So those are things that are coming in. Uh, it would be great if we could do it by the fall town meeting. Uh, if we can't, we'll try for spring. 
So, Emma, um, going back, and I can't, I don't think you talked about that. You know, we've been talking about putting solar on the library roof. Do you have any leads as to any kind of grants for solar to put on the roof? Not, not yet. Um, all of, all, everybody's talking about it. Uh, I went and heard um, uh, Chairman Roy, who's part, who's the chair, who's, who's the House Chair for the um, telecommunication T C T C the the House Committee on Communication and and telecom uh, telecom yeah, utilities and energy one. yeah that one <laughs> and uh, he he spoke at the Sunderland Library along with Natalie Blay Natalie set up for him to come out and he's very enthusiastic about beefing up solar on um, parking lots on. Uh, you know, getting, you know, and on roofs and really optimizing that. And they want to have money for it. Uh, what passes the legislature is still up in the air. Uh, T the TCU reported out, I think, 42 different bills. And um, and they've got a, a omnibus, a climate omnibus budget that's, I mean, a bill that's coming out. Who knows? You know, maybe by the sometime in the middle of July when they actually get a budget, we might know what that some good stuff is coming to fund solar. Right now, everybody's talking, nothing's happening. Okay. Is anybody on your committee doing, aside from that, doing any of the research, looking for grants, anything yes. that's available? Okay. Yes. And you sent me that um, website and I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, okay. Well, that's your homework. Yes, I know. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. That's great. All right. Um, yeah. Pete sent me some, since Pete Law couldn't be on tonight, he just sent me his report. So I'll just let you know what's going on with that. He said he's continuing to work with Chief Pachorik and DPW on storm related issues. Recently, they signed off an emergency certificate for Hawks and Foxtown roads and repairs are well underway. Let's see additional sites throughout town were reviewed, discussed. Several sites visit to ensure proper sediment and erosion control devices were properly installed, namely the Antonellis Farm and the Sunny Days Campus. That's good to know. Um, further discussions were held with constituents for Cumberland Farms relative to the requirements during the upcoming detention pond, oh, maintenance activities, yeah. So um, they're just gonna wait until we have some dry weather if that ever happens, hopefully. And let's see, initial discussions were held between the CONSCOM and Outdoor Space and Rec Committee regarding CONSCOM potential role in protecting four parcels of town-owned land, okay, primarily on the Pocumtuck Ridge. So, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So I, fair I, can, for... I can speak to that if, the, if, you're, if you're interested. That's the four parcels of land that we've been working that oh, moment. Okay been working on forever okay. there we had hoped to get um conservation restrictions on those four pieces of land and that uh franklin land trust would hold those conservation restrictions because the town cannot hold them because they own the land right and franklin land trust said no yeah. and, oh. and said but there is another means by which the land can pr be protected and it's called article uh I want to say it's either 79 or 92 um and it 97. involves i'm sorry 79 97 97 oh close uh 97 <laughs> uh and it 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 requires conscom to accept the land and that's what the discussion was about so that's what i don't know what the end result was the the article 97 says the conscom will do this and unfortunately, um, our CONSCOM doesn't have bylaws yet. And so uh -huh. they sort of react to things um, through this right. list of options that they have, but they don't have bylaws that say that they can accept. So we're in this weird limbo of, you know, the state says you should have to do this. And they say, eh, we don't know how to do that. So that's, that's where we are. Well, that, you know, that's something, you know, if other other towns have bylaws, Conscom can look at that, we can do it and vote on it at special town meeting if they got, you know, got with it. Well, Carolyn? Um, yeah. I just had a question. 
do any of those parcels have the uh, uh, beaver dam on it? Andrea, do you know? So it's the steam mill forest. It's the pine nook forest. It's um, uh, a, a piece of land, it's called wood. It's up on the Eastern. It's close to the um, stage road. And what's the fourth one? I think the fourth one is also on Pine Nook Road. So I don't know. They certainly have vernal pools on them, we know. I don't know about a beaver, beaver pond. They, they don't have beavers. Okay. okay. They're, they're up on the mountains. So. <laughs> yeah, it's way up. Yeah, they're all yeah. way up. No, that's yeah. good. This is, this is um, directly sort of by John uh, Staberski's, if you go from John Staberski's property and look up. Okay. And, we we need to, we need to be aware of that beaver pond because that has is holding back a lot of water and at some point we need to be doing something with it from a public health point of view it it could let go at some time and it'd be awful but beaver relocation project yeah. yes adopt a pet I don't know or, okay. or, so so just two things two things really quick on the Article 97. So one, I believe uh, Julie had a question into our town council about, you know, what are some other ways yeah. we can make sure these are Article 97 worthy. Um, yes. And then the yes. other the other thing to be aware of is that um, with the Stillwater Bridge project, um, the town may well end up having to um, do some kind of Article 97 land swap, potentially, depending on where the the, the reconstructed bridge falls. Um, okay. So there might be an opportunity here to, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, bundle um, it all together. To, yeah, okay. yeah, something just it's something to be aware of. Yeah, I want. I do want to say that um, Franklin Land Trust helped us understand this Article ninety seven. So even though they declined to hold the CRs, they are still continuing to help us. That's great, Carolyn. I uh, just to follow up from what Christopher said about the Stillwater Bridge, we um, are moving forward to start that process. And the reason why I was pushing so hard for it is because the property on the southeast side of the bridge is um, DCR property and it is in conservation. So what he's talking about is doing a flip. If it goes through the legislature, usually you have to do it you know, more and double sometimes. So this would be a really good project to be one of those things if it's if the land is considered good enough. And- um oh, we'll take a rock. Yeah. This, I, someone should report on this because this is huge is, you know, it's our bridge, but the state um, is finally working on it. It's a $23 million project that I've been, you know, shepherding for like 15 years. So, but we, we just found out, you know, last, in the, uh, about a few months ago that we have to take care of this, the property where the bridge is going to be. Um, expanding so the we have to deal with the hydro companies that own the west side both north and south and plus a, a private resident so we're we're the plans were just this past week approved so we are starting that process and hopefully we'll have some information i would think some basic information you know and by the summer good great Thank you. All right, uh, last but not least, Tim. So I'm gonna go quickly, um, just to say it on recording, April uh, the uh, annual town meeting, April 29th at 6 p.m. Frontier, be there. Uh, 1888 walkthrough, second walkthrough is taking place on Friday at one o'clock um, for any interested designers. Um, some additional information will be shared with the whole everyone who's visited or does visit on Friday. Christopher Dunn has talked about the possibility for looking at whether we can get a, a grant of up to 200,000 for an elevator. Is that right, Chris? Ooh. Yeah, the uh, municipal ADA program, uh, improvement program. So that would be, you know, at some point next year looking at that, but yep, that's definitely on the radar. Okay. Um, the 1821 building kitchen flooring, as Carolyn mentioned, has gone in. The appliances arrived. Um, the cabinets have been ordered and they should be here in four weeks. Um, the sinks and faucets are waiting to be installed. Um, 
we have a carpenter lined up to um, be the lead on assembling the cabinets when they arrive, and I'm going to be his dog's body. Um, the Leary lot contract apparently is getting closer to being in our hands. Um, and we're optimistic that an RFP can go out within the next four to six weeks. Is that what you're hearing from Chris Nolan, Christopher? It is. Yep. And, uh, so they're, it's still just kind of waiting on the feds. Um, you know, I, I think they're talking about whether or not they can go out to actually procure construction, um, and then just wait to sign the contracts after they, you know, square everything away with the, the U S government. So, right. So I, I, I went and met uh, Congressman McGovern, who came to the Senior Center on Wednesday, and I talked with Kobe Gardner-Levine, his aide from the Northampton office, and he explained a little bit about they're trying to intercede on our behalf with the uh, government agency that's holding up the contract. So hopefully, you know, that will write itself um, as you heard sunny days is actually doing work now so when you drive along um route greenfield road um past treehouse going south you'll see a big bunch of trees that have been removed and you'll see the erosion controls that uh pete was talking about hay bales and um mm -hmm. fencing and the last thing is that uh although we don't we usually talk about this. Um, last year, we tried to get a human rights advisory committee over the finish line, and we thought we had done that, but um, a couple of people backed out of the process. So I'm going to try and work with Kate Lawless, who had been one of the people who were hoping to chair the thing, um, to try and finish up the process and then look for volunteers to serve on a committee. And that's it. Well, so getting back to the 1821 building, who installed the floor, Tim? Yes. Yes, Tim did. So yeah, and we'll Tim. a big hand to Tim for doing that. It looks amazing. Oh my well, God, the you. whole place looks amazing. I know it does. And uh, it's so exciting. Once the kitchen is in there, we're hoping to arrange some senior center tours for people so that they can go yeah. and think about oh this would be nice to move in here so and Perfect. a lot Great of the work's been done so the uh, feasibility study should have a better place to look at yeah oh the final thing i wanted to mention is we have awarded a contract to fix the the roof of the church the relish project as we call it and uh, um it it was more expensive than we thought it would be from the two year ago estimate but Probably there's a lot of work involved. And um, I think the company that we hired has got its bonding in place. And now I, I don't know if the contract is in process of being signed. Do you have any update on that, Christopher? No. Carolyn, Tim, Tim does that include? Does that include oh, sorry. We approved the, uh, a contract for um, also the bracing of the balcony. Yeah. So it was right. a relish repair, two relishes, and that was why it was a little bit more than what we estimated because we had originally thought there was only one relish that was rotting out and slipping, but there's two. And then also the the alternate of the bracing for the balcony. So the wood, I mean, the it wouldn't put more stress on the relishes that are repaired. And then we can start working on the sanctuary. It's so exciting, I have to say. Tim has done an amazing job. Um, that is great. Thank you. Yay, yay, yay. All right. I'm trying to think what else, if there's anything else. Just a couple of things I know that Christopher, I don't know, I guess um, Business West magazine came out. And so this was this is when I was on vacation in Mexico. <laughs> and Christopher, so we had it, we had a three-way conversation about the campus, and I did plug senior housing for whatever that's worth, you know, on <laughs> Business West. But thanks, Christopher. That was a, that was a nice article, but that was fun. I was on the beach talking, you know, before my uh, margarita, of course. But anyway, that was fun. And let's see what else. Oh, there's also 
I think, Tim, I think you attended that. There's a, there was a Melissa Hoffer Zoom. There's a series on climate change, climate issues, I think through the MMA. Right. And so uh, the first speaker was Melissa Hoffer, who is just amazing. I mean, she just, I just, I can't believe how, how amazing she is. She's so smart and she's such a great speaker. So it was really good. And I'm not sure who's, who's the next one, but I think I just signed up for that one. So that was really good. Um, what else? Yeah, Don't you have an MMA thing this weekend on Saturday? No, no, that's April 27th. That's the 27th? Yeah. Yeah, that's at Hotel Northampton. That's it. MSA, yeah. Rural Conference. Right. Okay. Carolyn? I just want to just follow up on that. Uh, the next, the next uh, climate you know, chat, fireside chat or whatever they're calling it is um, uh, going to be on actually implementation. So um, I I did talk to Melissa about uh, the EWP program that we use, the emergency watershed protection program that we use here in town successfully. And so she's, whoever's going to be talking about it is one of the things they're going to be. Um, so, I mean, they may reference Deerfield, who knows, but we've had- Well, she did. She, Melissa- reference Deerfield I think first when she was talking about different towns so that was that was sort of cool but I mean, she's she yeah. is great um we're having her speak just in case anyone is interested Massachusetts is hosting the um, New England and the National Association of Conservation Districts meeting the uh this summer in Boston I happen to be president of the Mass Association of Conservation Districts and Melissa it will be speaking and um, so it's August um, uh, 12th, 13th, in case anyone is interested. Excellent. On the seaport. So it's pretty oh, nice. nice. Yeah. All right. So if there's, uh, we need to set another meeting, our next meeting. And obviously after town meeting <laughs> at this point. Right, let's see, it's April. I don't know, do you want to, wait, town meeting is 29th. 29th and there's town election on the 6th. So I don't know what do people think. I want to wait. Hey. Yeah, well, is Christopher, uh, when is the uh, 604B and the um, 319s do, that's like in the middle of the month, right? I want to say that the 604B is May 8th, but let me just double check my calendar. I, the only reason I'm thinking is we should we should wait until we have um, some input, you know, some concrete input from some of the grants that we're intending to apply for, maybe. I don't know. Just because poor Chris will be out straight anyway. So you want to do it after May 8th? Yeah, I was thinking of the week of the 13th or the 20th, something like that, so that we have something to report because we can yeah. then talk about grants. So uh, in see. planning board meeting is May 13th. Um, and, maybe, and maybe MA will have more info on the, um, you know, the green community stuff too. Right, okay, yeah. It's, May 16th, I know that's a senior housing night. It seems Thursday seemed to be, I know, but you guys meet every week. Yes, yeah, so that know. we can, I'm sure that my committee would be delighted to. <laughs> no pressure, Lily, no pressure. I don't know. You know, it seems Wednesdays are problematic. It seems like the other uh, days are No, Thursday's fine, but Thursday, May 16th. May 16th, is that good for people? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I will be at a Madeline Peru concert at the Bombic Center. Oh. So will I. <laughs> oh, um, well, that's what you I'm do. totally jealous. What, what, I need to talk to you about that. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, so two people can't attend. So, let's see. Yeah, we need May 23rd, maybe? Yep. That's, yeah, that's fine. Because the other thing is maybe we'll get um 
Julie Chalfant back because school will be out, you know, colleges will be out. Well, so. yeah. And I mean, right now is busy. I, I did see her the other night and I said, Hey, CC, but you know, they have finance committee meetings. It's like, you know, yeah, she's 24 seven. Yeah. Definitely putting in a lot of work on that outside yeah, of meetings. Too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a crazy time of year. So, so is May 23rd better? Too? Yes. It works for me. Yes. Yeah. I Okay. I just wanted to okay. remind everyone who's a Deerfield resident that um, there is an election on May 6th and you can sign up or if you've signed up for or need to get a, a ballot in advance, you should contact the town and find out the process. And otherwise, turn out and vote on May 6th. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> What time do we meet? Is it 630? 6 30? 6 30. We've got Thursday, May 23rd at 6 30. Okay. All right. So if there is no other business that was anticipated, do I hear a motion? Oh, the, does the select board have to close their meeting first? I make a motion to close the select board meeting. Second. All those in favor? MLGI. Carolyn S. I. Do I hear a motion to close CCI? I, mean, I move. Okay. Take a vote. Lily. Aye. Jim. Aye. Christopher. Aye. Emmett. Emmett. Aye. Tim. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Carolyn. Yes. Denise, yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good meeting.